Okay, tonight we're going to talk about this wheel thing that I have on my desk. So, um, just so everybody knows, when we do uh, reviews or anything that we feature, especially that messes around with the workflow when I tie, uh, we usually put it through the ringer. We don't just uh, review it sight unseen and um, call it good. So, I've been using the tie wheel. That's what this thinger is called for about four months. And I'll be honest, I was pretty skeptical on whether it would fit into my workflow and kind of the way I tie and how I use my tools and where I set them and what I do with the things that I use. So um, after using it for a little bit, though, I was really impressed. Uh, my first thought was, man, this is going to get in my way or it's going to impede how I tie, but <clears throat> absolutely not. Um, and so we'll, I'm just going to go through some of the features so you can kind of see how I use it and, um, how it works into my workflow, what I use, uh, to, you know, wh what I put things where and, and how I've got it all divided up. So <clears throat> at a high level. So the way this works is it's a it's a modular system. I've got my vise sitting right on top in a uh, little stem receiver. Everything below that is uh, I have a C clamp. I'm kind of a C clamp guy, but the the base, which consists of a wheel and these little components that come apart. So uh, the way these work is that they're magnetic. So all the modules, this is the, it's a deep uh, little pocket container. I use this to put some materials if I'm tying kind of in production mode, I'll throw a bunch of, of the same types of materials in there. And it attaches to the main wheel by virtue of these little magnets. So you just take that and it will snap right into place. And they're, they're actually really stable so you don't, have to worry about them coming apart. Now the other nice thing is that those are the magnets underneath there, but because that, then you'll have, for instance, if you've got hooks, they will secure themselves down to the, the surface there, razor blade, and it will go right down. The other cool thing is that if you've got a pair of scissors, you can, the scissors will actually set right in place with the magnet if you want to hold them like that. So going around the clock here, <clears throat> the uh, shallow pocket base. And again, usually I'll put, <clears throat> if I'm staging hooks and beads, I'll stick them all in there like that and uh, other small things and it holds it quite nicely and again snaps right into place the probably my favorite one here is the tool caddy so it has all these different size holes you can put things from your bobbin holders uh, your combs bodkins whip finishers uh, and, and they're all there right at hand they don't get in your way because they're a pushed out a ways from the, the stem. And so you can load that up. Obviously it's not gonna hold all your tools. That's not the intent here. The intent is to hold tools that you're using. So if I'm tying in a given session or a bunch of different patterns at the same time, I'll load it all up with the same color of uh, threads and bobbins and the, the tools that I wanna have. As you'll notice over here, I've got the secondary tool caddy these are ones that I may not use as often. And then I've even got some more back up in this area here that uh, 
e holds even more tools. So don't think this is gonna hold everything as far as your tools go, but it keeps the ones you want close at hand. All right, so the last little module here is the spool uh, holder thingy. Uh, <clears throat> I forget the technical name, but it has these pegs. And I actually like to, you, the pegs are interchangeable. So you can have the pegs go vertically like that, or you can have them horizontally like this so that you can put your spools on that way. I like to have the last one empty because I like to have my whip finisher and this fits very nicely in the uh, the end one so that I have quick access to my whip finisher, which I always like to keep on the right hand side. And <clears throat> so obviously again, you, you're not gonna be able to store all of your spools and that's not the intent. It's to keep whatever you're using for the given tying session at hand close by. If I need some tinsel, you can just peel that off right there and snip it. You don't even have to take these off. So this is a very, very handy one. And then we've got the deeper pocket version, which again, you can put materials in. I've all sometimes put uh, <clears throat> like a whole thing of dubbing I put in here before. If I'm gonna blow through a huge batch of dubbing, I'll keep it in here. It's kind of nice. Or sometimes, again, if I'm out of room, depending on what I have, uh, I may actually lean my scissors in there, carefully, of course. And because it's magnetized as well, clips right back on. And then <clears throat> the other thing, like I mentioned, is because it's all magnetized, I can take some hooks or flies, whatever. Looks like these are the ones Cheech tied. They don't, they don't work, so, oh no, they do. Okay, so beyond the little modules that it comes with or the, the add-ons, those uh, those are sold as a set. You, you can get everything as a set. Uh, there's a couple different versions of the sets you can buy, or you can buy them individually. You can buy just the wheel, which would serve as a tray. It's still magnetic. Um, and then you can pick and choose which of the different modules that you like, like I just explained. Uh, there's another one I don't have set up here. It's a little garbage container. Um, it, it's kind of cool, except for me, I, I tie with my garbage uh, either underneath or right behind over here. So I don't really need a little garbage module on this. So instead I've gone with the configurations and setup I have here. Now the other cool thing, and this is the one that uh, uh, people ask about a lot, is that what kind of vices will it support? So right now I've got the Renzetti Master Vice, and it fits great. This is just the regular master vise with its regular stem, nothing else. The, the uh, stem receiver here has a little Allen wrench. And <clears throat> so we can loosen that. And yeah, this, is, this is pretty easy. So I'm just going to take this off. Now we're going to try it with our Regal Revolution. So again, same thing sits in there just fine. The other thing that I would worry about if I had a vice stem that was shorter, and this is why I need this little adapter right here, is that it would be too close to the surface. So my main concern with this in the first place was that I had stuff beneath where I'm tying. And I, I'm kind of a, uh, really get anal about my work area here. So I don't like to have things right below where I'm tying. But the nice thing is about the way this works is that this little adapter sticks my stem up a little higher so that the head of my, uh, the jaws here are right where I want them. So they're not too close. Because again, if they were too close to the base, my thread, the bobbin might bump against it or I might be hitting the uh, doodads that I have sitting in here. So, um, so that's, the, that's the Regal. And here we have the stalwart Montana mongoose from Griffin. Same kind of deal. So you'll notice that there's no difference in terms of the height to the base. So it's still gonna fit. I've tried other vices in there too. So as long as they've got the standard stem size, it, it's gonna fit in there just fine. So then one final note that you wanna make sure of is that when you, if you don't have a C-clamp, you don't have to have a C-clamp. You can use this on any 
uh, base vise that has a base, a pedestal base, and not a, a C clamp. The only thing is that you'll likely want to get the little adapter here because of the way that the you lose some space between your jaws and the base when you add in the plates or the, the wheel. So just want to make sure that you, uh, I like having this little adapter because it raises the, the jaws up a little bit. You don't have to have all these, the doodads in there. So for instance, if I, I was worried about running interference on my jaws and the materials hanging down, I could go with only three of them instead of four. And then that leaves me an opening here that I could uh, avoid some of that interference. But I like the way it works here. Again, I don't change my workflow. You know, obviously we tie with different vices in the videos. I've got the Renzetti Master Vice right now. I tie with other vices too. Um, but I don't mess around with the workflow too much. So this one for me has been incredible because I, it holds my tools. I can set stuff in there. It really serves all purposes. And it's in such compact uh, configuration. It's not like one of those big tying benches that are too small to hold all your stuff and they're not, uh, and then they're too big to, to be used in a kind of a fashion like this. So that's one of the reasons I like this. It's a, it's a compact form factor, but it's very efficient and useful in what I do. And I'm not trying to sell you. We do these, we do sell these on the website, but yeah, it's, um, I'm just showing you what I use on my setup. I've had people ask about it from different photos and videos we've shown. And I figured it was a good time to show you why we do or why I have this set up and, and uh, I use it now all the time. So it's not, it's not an optional temporary thing. This is, this is how my um, tool area and tying area is now set up. If you want information on it, we've got that on our website and you can give them a look. Again, it's called the tie wheel and uh, give it a try. Every day I'd like to love you, love you.